Hey, how's everyone doing? Today, I'm gonna be showing you how to complete the Firebase Z Easter egg solo and co-op. This Easter egg is super easy, and to be fair with you, this might be the easiest and fastest Easter egg in Cold War, besides the second Outbreak Easter egg, which is a video for another day. Siaso, before we can jump in game, we have to come up with the class setup. I strongly recommend bringing in the Gallo SA-12 shotgun, and the attachments are 100% up to you, but if you have the weapon leveled up and wanna use my attachments, then here you go. For the muzzle, I had the duckbill choke. The barrel had on the 23.5 inch cavalry lancer. For the body, I had the SWAT 5 MW laser sight. The magazine had the Stanag 12 round tube. And finally, for the stock, I brought in the marathon stock. For a field upgrade, I recommend bringing in the ether shroud field upgrade to avoid taking it down if you're stuck. But if you want, you can also bring in ring of fire for extra damage output. It's completely up to you. Step one is gonna have you turn on both power and Pack-a-Punch at the same time. This map is a little weird in the sense that when you turn on power, Pap will automatically open. To start on power, talk to Ravanov in spawn, and when he's done talking, go through the portal at the top of spawn. There are three different ether reactors you need to turn on and fill with zombie souls while protecting them. Each one of these can only be done one at a time, so if you're in co-op, if one has been activated, then someone else can't go turn on another one until that first one is done. There's one in mission control control, another in military command, and the final one is in the data center. Filling these up isn't hard to do, and there is a progress bar you can see to know when each one is done. Also, real quick in solo, each of these costs 500 points to activate, and when they're done, you'll also receive a thousand extra points. In co-op, I don't know if the prices change to activate it or if you get more points for completion. I've never played this in co-op, so yeah, either way, the solo amounts will be the base for co-op. When power is activated, go back through the portal and next to Ravanov, Pap will be turned on. The marker on the map while you're going back to Pap will say talk to Ravanov, but you don't have to do this. You just have to be near Pap for it to permanently turn on and then you can move on to step two. Step two will first start by going to Peck at the bottom of mission control outside this window to talk to him. He's gonna have some dialogue and when Ravanov tells you to go back to the village, do that. While there, interact with Ravanov and he will give you a key card you can use on three three different storage cabinets to collect chemicals. The three storage cabinets are at the equipment storage and spawn, one is inside engineering, and the final one is inside the colonel's office. When you open up all three, there will be chemicals you need to pick up inside. Bring those chemicals to this mixer in the field hospital and interact with it. A bunch of dogs are going to spawn and after like 30 seconds you'll be able to transfer the mixer to the agent delivery system. Then you can pick it up. Now bring the agent delivery system up to the roof of the PC and place it on this air vent, then go back to Peck and interact with him. I guess I should also mention that during important steps like this, anytime you interact with a person like Ravanov or Peck, zombies won't bother you. Step three begins when Peck starts dancing and talking about his wife or girlfriend Martha. I don't know who she is, but basically Peck did it all for the nookie. Anyway, once he does start dancing, it'll give you another prompt to interact with him. He'll talk some more and tell you to go over to the data center. When you get there, inside of this machine, there will be capture devices and you need to grab one. Just a heads up, you can only hold one at a time anyway, and it'll take the place of your tactical equipment. Now, whatever round you're on, flip the round. In each area of the map, including spawn, there will be four random objects on the floor. Three of them are decoys and one of them will be a mimic. Let me go ahead and specify this whole step because the whole step is completely random and it's completely fucking stupid. It's not hard to do, but it gets a little frustrating when you get in the higher rounds, so just bear with me here for a second. The four random objects on the floor would be stuff like scrap or lethal and tactical grenades and equipment. Uh, it could even be score streaks too. Basically, when you walk over three of them, nothing is going to happen. They're there and you can see them, but you can't pick them up or interact with them. One of them, though, out of the four, will be a mimic, and when you get close enough to it, the mimic will come out. You have to get this mimic extremely low on health. Basically, one shot or like a little bit higher than that, but the goal here is, is you have to get him low on health to contain him in one of those capture devices, and the capture device works like a C4 charge. When you throw it down, whatever your, like, C4 activation button is on whatever console you're on is what you would press to be able to, like, activate the, the capture device. When you do that, one of two things is gonna happen. The capture device is gonna contain him, or he will break free, and if he breaks free, then that means he wasn't low enough on health. If you accidentally completely kill 
kill him while trying to get him low on health, then it's not an issue. You could always just flip the round and try again, searching the entire map for four random ass objects lying on the floor. If you do manage to contain the mimic, all you have to do is bring the capture device back to the machine that you had originally got it from. And all you have to do is interact with the right side of the machine. When you do that, the machine will start to read out the name of the mimic you captured as well as its memories. So in total, you have to do this three times on three different rounds, specifically looking for the names Sokolov, Brahms, and Zabin. So again, you have to grab three separate containment devices and find three mimics on three different rounds by searching the map for four different random objects on the floor, get the mimics down to super low health and trap them inside the containment devices, then return the devices to the machine inside of the data center. A couple of side notes, I know I'm droning on, but I swear to God, this step fucking sucks because mimics can spawn during this too that are not a main priority. And if you get the wrong one or kill the right one and do this, then you'll need to keep flipping rounds to do this. So yeah, fair warning, it's not hard to do, but it's time consuming. And that's why I was so frustrated when I first started explaining this step. I swear, it took me like the whole Easter egg to record took me an hour and a half and like 45 minutes of it was just this step. When the machine is reading out the names of the people, I would just recommend that you turn on subtitles for that part so you can see the names. But when you've gotten all three of the memories you need from Sokolov, Brahms, and Zabine, they'll be downloaded onto a floppy disk that will come out of the machine and you need to pick it up and bring it to this computer in the planning offices. After a couple seconds, the door to the OPC will open and you need to go inside to get a dimensional breach to spawn in. After some more time, Weaver will tell you to go back to Peck, and this is where step four starts. For this, interact with Peck and he'll talk to you, eventually closing the shutters on the window, and Ravanov will give you a code that you need to input on this locker next to the window. Don't worry though, the code will automatically be inputted when you interact with it, and the ether meter will pop out for you to pick up. Now head to Scorch Defense behind you and go into this building on the left to pick up this shovel leaning on these boxes. Before we go any further with the Easter egg, we need to get the Ray K. 84. To start, grab this blueprint in the weapon lab. Now head down into Scorch Defense and leaning on this tank, there will be a body you need to interact with to get an eye. As soon as you interact with this body, you'll be pulled into a cutscene. When the cutscene is over, a ton of zombies are going to spawn, but you need to bring the eye back to the weapons lab and put it in the retinal scanner to unlock the drawer on the desk. When you do that, the drawer is going to open, revealing a key that you need to pick up. You need to bring this key to the barracks and both inside barracks one and two, there will be a bunch of lockers you need to unlock. All of these but one will do absolutely nothing, but that one will spawn in a mimic. You just need to kill it for a part to drop, specifically the barrel. Just a side note, let me clarify a little more. Unlocking these lockers for me did nothing except for one of them, but I have seen and heard that each time you unlock one, a mimic will spawn for each of the lockers, and it's just a random mimic that will end up dropping the barrel. I may have just gotten lucky or maybe Treyarch patched it and made it so that only one mimic will spawn now. I don't know, but do this at your own risk if you don't want a bunch of mimics to spawn in. When you've gotten the barrel, go back to the weapons lab and interact with this computer. The lit up moving triangle will stop in three different locations and these locations correlate to a specific number on a dartboard. So if you pull up an image of one to see where the triangle stops each time, it'll be much easier to do this next part. Also, the order as well as locations will be different in every game as to where that little triangle stops within the computer screen. As long as you remember where the triangle stopped three times, however you want to do it, go to spawn and in the village mess hall, there will be a dartboard and you need to shoot the three locations where that triangle stopped in the order that they stopped in. Then you need to shoot the bullseye. The dartboard will open up and a part will drop out of it onto the floor. If you happen to get the order wrong or you can't remember the order, then it's not a problem you can just go back to the computer and interact with it as many times as you need to. For the next part of this, starting on round 15, manglers will begin to spawn and you need to shoot the arm cannon of them until eventually one drops the magazine for the Ray K-84. This one is more RNG based, but you could get it after the first mangler kill or it could be your sixth. When it does drop, pick it up and bring it to the charger in the weapons lab. Place it down and wait about a round or two and come back. It should now be glowing, just pick it up and run over to where you had originally picked up the blueprint and build it there. Now you have the Ray K-84, which does have two different firing modes, which is important for 
later and that's why we needed it. Getting back into step four, you need to dig up three different holes to find Ethereum canisters that will charge the ether reactors further, but each one has their own quirk. For the first one, come to the back of Jungle Defense here and dig up the canister. This canister will now start a lockdown spawning a green bubble that you have to stay inside of. A bunch of dogs and manglers will spawn and the goal here is to just survive for about a minute to a minute and a half. When the bubble disappears, you can pick the canister up and you then need to run to the ether reactor in the military command and transfer the crystal from the canister to the reactor. The second canister can be found in the barracks area of the map and it will be near these doors going into the field hospital. Dig it up and it will begin teleporting around the barracks. You need to pull out the reiki and stand at a distance when you see it because it will continuously move if you get too close to it. So switch to the reiki's alternate ammo to Type. I don't know what the button is, especially on PC. Mine was unbound, so I think I made it be. Anyway, the point is you need to slow down the canister and the way to do that is by shooting it with that ammo type, allowing you to get close enough to pick it up. And once again, you need to go to the ether reactor in the data center and add the crystal from the canister to the reactor. The final canister is in the open lot in this corner. Dig it up and suddenly there will be like 50 canisters littering the area. All you need to do is look for the canister that does not have any black particles and smoke. So this may take you a second to find it. Here is what the canister should look like. And as you can see, it looks pure and uncorrupted, just like me in the first grade. All of these canisters that you see, by the way, will only spawn in the open lot, engineering, and in the planning offices. So take your time and look for the right one. If you fail, I think you have to end the round and they'll just respawn. But if not, you might need to dig the hole again. Once again, though, bring that canister to the last ether reactor in mission control and give it the crystal. Head back over to the OPC and the portal that spawned there earlier will collapse on itself. Step 5 starts with Peck and Weaver going back and forth. Eventually, Weaver will tell you to align a satellite with the giant dish on the map. Come to this keyboard and mouse in the planning offices and there will be a blue light on the screen which is the mouse you are controlling and there will be a bunch of glowing orbs. These glowing orbs when you hover over them with the blue mouse will have either a Soviet or American flag on them, but you're looking for one that is labeled with a question mark. When you find it, align the satellite. After a couple seconds, a red beam will come down and hit the dish, powering the OPC again. After some more time passes, you'll get a marker to appear telling you to interact with the OPC computer, but do not do this yet because you will be pulled into the boss fight. To set up for this boss fight, I recommend the following. For perks, Jug, Stamina, Quick Revive, and Speed Cola. A minimum of Tier 2 armor, having your Gallo shotgun at least tier 1 pack and at purple rarity, having the Ray K at at least tier 2 pack, and that one is very important, that one specifically, and finally some decoy grenades. All of these are useful and important, so if you don't have enough scrap for all of this, then I would fly through a couple of rounds because it'll be well worth it. Also, lastly, if you don't have a self-revive, I recommend getting one of those too. Whenever you're set up and ready, go to the OPC and interact with the computer. A cutscene will start and when it ends you'll be in spawn. While in spawn you'll be fighting the Orta, which kind of sucks only because if you reach round 40 you get to fight him during a defense round so it just kind of feels like a waste of a boss fight. But anyway, this boss is pretty easy and straightforward. He has three attacks, one where he slams down his fist, another where he shoots fire at you from his fist, and the final attack is him throwing swarms of pretty much like bees or something that will do damage over time for like five seconds. Basically throughout the boss fight, use decoys and ether shroud to keep zombies distracted and shoot the Ray K at him continuously. When the hole in his face starts to glow yellow, that means it's a weak spot and if you shoot it, you'll do double the damage, so keep that in mind. Also, this concept works for his hand too. If you shoot the hand while it's open and he's throwing fire at you, then this will also do double the damage. If you run out of ammo, there's a fair amount of mini boss zombies that appear and when you kill them, they drop ammo or there is an ammo crate somewhere in spawn that you can just buy for the Ray K for like 10,000 points. When the health bar on the Orta is completely out, you'll get a second cutscene and for completing this Easter egg, you will not receive an achievement. For some reason, they decided not to include achievements with this map. I want to thank all of you for taking the time to watch this video today. I really do hope I helped you out in a more clear and concise way if you were struggling to
to complete this. My next video will be on Outbreak's first Easter egg, which might be a long one because there's so many maps and ways to get it started. But thank you all again. Leave a random emoji in the comments if you're seeing this. I want to hear from you. Real quickly too, I do want to say I'm sorry if this video in this guide kind of seems a little more rushed and not as like thought through as other guides. This Easter egg on its own is actually like very, very easy. So I feel as though that I've explained it to the best of my ability and like it, it should be fine. I don't know. Also, I stutter a lot when I go off of my script. I write the script because I stutter. I remember how to do these things. It's just because I stutter. And if I'm sitting there reading it, for some reason, I don't. I don't know why I, I can't help it. But anyway, I hope you all have a great day. Bye.